Hey, everybody, and thank you so much for attending the Howie and Beast Mode podcast on business growth, strategy, and execution. I'm Howie, and I'm joined here by Beast Mode as usual. Hey, man. Hey, Howie. How are you? It's such a wonderful day to speak with you. I know it's late Tuesday, but we've got a wonderful topic on insight that's been percolating in your heart that we're ready to jump into. So, Well, you know, we got to find a way to spread some positivity during the pandemic, for sure. So... Yeah, I think both of us are excited about this particular uh, talk. So we actually have some slides to go along with uh, tonight. So we will uh, we'll share that for folks as well here. Uh, tell me if you can see that. Yeah, we are ready to go. Okay, very cool. Okay. So yeah, the topic is insight uh, for this podcast. And, you know, we talked a lot about courage. Um, you know, we talked about heroes and zeros during this pandemic. We talked about courage. We're going to talk a little bit about insight. And both Beast Mode and I have experience in driving business development, business growth, customer retention, uh, utilizing insight. You'll hear about the topic of insight uh, during, you know, Challenger. If you if you guys have checked out the, the book, The Challenger Customer or The Challenger Sale, uh, with the Challenger profile uses insight. So I think this would be a really good uh, practical talk and I hope inspirational for uh, for all of us. Um, in general, uh, we'd like to, to have a little title here, you know, using insight to drive progress. If you think about, you know, the medical professionals that are our heroes right now, and they're always our heroes, but right now even more, you know, they use a lot of data, they use a lot of feedback systems, and they use that to drive insight. And then we value and we listen to their insights. You know, almost everybody listens to a medical professional with a high degree of seriousness because of their insights. So how can you, uh, as someone in sales or management or a business owner or business development, or someone who has a job who's trying to, you know, make sure that their job is safe and, and in a growing and a good position, how can you use insights to make all of that growth happen? And that's what we're going to dig into just a little bit uh, this evening. So with that, There's a story actually in the Bible. So this is a, a, you know, we don't overly, you know, let's say, you know, preach necessarily on this podcast, but we do have a spiritual background. And so there's a, we do like to pull in some scriptures that we think are inspirational. We certainly encourage all of you to, uh, to view the Bible as a, uh, both a spiritual book for life, uh, but also as a great business book. Uh, one of the stories that Beast Mode and I talked about a little bit earlier uh, was the story of Joseph and how he had some opportunities to, to provide some insights in the form of a dream interpretation uh, that, you know, both of his, his predictions came true. Uh, and yet, you know, in, in the sharing of that insight, um, you know, he was forgotten. And so, you know, sometimes what you have to understand is that it's your job in, in the business situation, in your career situation, to, to identify the business problem um, and, and to really to use that as a, an opportunity to fill a need, right? So find a business problem and fill a need. Um, and then if you are forgotten in that process, then you, 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 know, you do have to have a little bit of faith. You have to have a little bit of um, expectation that you're, it's sort of like you know, planting seeds. The crop doesn't come up immediately, basically. But your job is to identify problems, you know, start with a, a foundation of faithfulness and what that means is that, um, you know, like in the story of Joseph, Joseph was a very faithful person. He was thrown, even in, in jail, he was thrown to jail uh, and became the leader of the whole jail. Uh, but then he found some problems and he solved those business problems, uh, but he filled the needs with his insights. And even when he was forgotten, he kept his, his uh, positivity up. So Beast Mode, I mean, I think sometimes we have an expectation, you know, whether it be a down economy or an up economy, that we're trying to help others, we're trying to solve business problems, we're sharing insights, and sometimes we might feel forgotten. I mean, what do we do? Yeah, insights are, are, are just one of those things that you can, it takes a little bit of effort. It, it goes, uh, you gotta go above and beyond to really not gather the insight, but then deliver the insight. Um, the forgottenness of the insight, uh, to me, is temporary it's up front whenever it's going to come back in the back end and so i know we discussed this but it's a lot of times you're just delivering the insight and again sometimes um you're hoping that they'll receive that insight sooner rather than later but um 
it's, it's you're just sowing a seed and you're just letting that be breathed upon you're letting that uh, you know turn into its fruitfulness in its own given time yeah and i think you know one of the things that people might say is like you know i you know i, I i'm afraid of rejection or i have some kind of something that happened you know when i did share an insight how do we make sure that we're not you know sort of shackled by a past or shackled by our doubt um, but then when we see that need that we that we meet that need uh, and we provide those insights how do we how do we avoid kind of the baggage stopping that process yeah well to piggyback off of last week's it takes courage um, mm -hmm. it's one of those things that you know that your insights your specific wisdom and knowledge that you've obtained through um, the growth that you've gone through, the failures that you've gone through, things that you've made it out of, those insights have value. A lot of times we devalue the insights because we don't like maybe the way we obtained the insight. We wish we would have done it differently. If I would have obtained um, insight on business by getting a Harvard MBA, maybe I would be more apt to share it, but then that would be prideful. But whenever I've gone through couple of failed businesses and I've gone through the grit and the determination of having to get things off the ground. Maybe I just don't value that the same way as I see somebody else's, but there is a ton of value there. Um, and there's several great examples uh, in, in the business world, but also, also in the faith-based world, which I think we'll jump into a little bit later. Yeah, that's great. So I have a customer success story. So I, when I back from 2008 to 2012 for four years, uh, of my life, I, you know, I learned this kind of the hard way of how to use insights and, and what some of the alternatives are if you don't use insights. Um, but I had um, 14 employees at the peak of that particular job. And it's our job to basically, you know, grow and retain uh, current customers uh, across um, actually North America and the Pacific, uh, you know, as well. So Asia Pacific as well. And uh, it was about 25 to 2,700 customers at the peak, somewhere around there, and uh, tens of millions of dollars in revenue. It was my job and my team's job to grow and service uh, our, our current customers, basically. And so I tried a lot of things. We, you know, when you start a new uh, position, you know, there's a lot of learning and you're kind of doing, you're going through the classic business life cycle of forming, storming, norming, and then you're performing. So I kind of went through all of that uh, pretty quickly uh, in that tenure of that job. But I tried a lot of things because it was my job to retain our customers and to not have a customer churn, uh, but also to grow the revenue of those customers as well. And so, you know, I tried a lot of things. One of them was that we, we tried sheer effort. I mean, as an early uh, person in that job, I didn't have a lot more to offer. So I offered, you know, basically discipline where my reps and I would make strong efforts of making phone calls to customers to check in on them and to, you know, um, you know, I, I put several actually build new software systems that would help us track that to make sure we were in touch with our customers and all kinds of things like that. I also tried, so that was kind of the effort approach, a lot of different efforts and in, in the, you know, especially in the forming and storming uh, part of things. Tried, uh, you know, uh, relationship as well. So, you know, relationship basically was literally even sending top customers uh, tins of cookies, uh, multiple rounds of that. And I did, you know, I listen, I did get good positive feedback from some management and executives at some of those customer relationships and people appreciated it. Um, you know, we did various things like uh, this program that would um, sort of show a flag if they hadn't been called and it would start to go from green to de decay to yellow to red once they haven't been called for a while. So we tried all kinds of relationship and effort kind of things. And those, some of those things worked. I mean, they all had different levels uh, that worked, but the final thing that I tried, which is a couple of years in uh, to my tenure in that role was based on insight, which is what this podcast is about today. So let me talk to you a little bit about uh, what we did. And then Jordan and I will, you know, Jordan, Jordan and I will both, Bruce Miller and I uh, will really talk about this in general and give you guys some practical ideas and kind of uh, spitball this back and forth. Uh, just a little bit more. Um, but what we did was we, we basically provided a certain type of computer, uh, you know, website monitoring, mobile app monitoring, mobile site monitoring, all kinds of things around monitoring basically at that time. And what we did was we basically offered, I had seven engineers that were based in India that were part of my team too. And so I had access to some technical talent. 
And so I just thought, well, what if we just do a program for customers where we will look at their, their website, their, their mobile site, their mobile app performance, help them identify some problems and some opportunities, right? Some things maybe they, they might have missed because we're the experts in the industry in that particular space. So we had a lot of you know, insights that we can provide. So what if we provided some free, some pretty deep um, analysis for them, put it into a beautiful PDF, and then presented it to them on a call with their whole team. So they can all learn and they could also, kind of like teaching them to fish where we're showing them how to do also what we do and how do we find the information. So those insights. So here's the results of the insight. Remember, I tried the effort, the calls, the relationship stuff. I even tried gifts and all of that had a little bit of success, but, but let me tell you how this one works. I studied this one uh, with the, the providing our insights, our expertise as, our expertise as an organization, providing that to customers, here's what happened. I studied well over a hundred of these uh, in, in a uh, kind of a, a wrap up study that we were working on uh, to kind of prove that it was working and everything internally. And it turns out that 40%, over 40% of the people that went through this performance, like free insight study thing that we did, over 40% of them closed a growth deal with us doesn't mean they, they, they just wanted a quote or they were just curious or they were appreciative. No, they actually closed business. So if you could ever come up with better numbers on anything that you've ever done than a 40% growth, um, you know, I want to know what it is because it's among the top that I've seen. And all it was was using our category of knowledge and giving that to customers as a, um, as a help to them. And guess what? we did check off the boxes of effort with that. We did check off the boxes of relationship and the, the friendship and all that good, the good feeling stuff by doing that. But the insight carried the day and led to those sales. Uh, and I've heard of other stories of other, of other people doing things like that, where they're providing help to, to customers and be smooth. I know that you've provided insight to your customers and helped them to grow right overnight. I know there's a sports related uh, organization that you've worked with. Uh, quite a bit where you provided insights and it had an immediate effect. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, you know, why does this insight work? What have you seen? Yeah. Insight is really empathetic in my mind and it just shows that I'm trying to meet you right where you are. And especially whenever you, you know, you can give these things away. It's one of these things that um, whenever there's something that's of value to your customers, but cost us as a business, little or nothing it's something that we're going to do anyways it's one of those things that we can and we should be giving away um, and insight is one of those things now it does insight take more effort than cookies yes it does does insight take uh more deep thought than maybe uh, an initial relationship called us probably so but again the return on that investment is drastically higher just as how he had mentioned 40% on these returns on, on these efforts is it's incredible. And so, um, I couldn't be a bigger fan. Awesome. So I think, you know, everybody on the podcast may be saying to themselves, well, you know, you might, you might have different categories of listeners. I mean, I know that we do. So you've got some business owners, you've got people mm -hmm. in sales, you've got, maybe you've got realtors, you've got, um, uh, we talked about business development. We talked about what about just people who just have a job? Right. So people who right now are wanting to get ahead in their career, they want to grow, they want to do more within the company uh, or they're worried about their job. And so they want to see what can we do to kind of improve our chances to make sure we you know, are able to retain a job. And so what I would like to challenge all of us with is within your skill set. So let's say you're in customer service. You're getting 45 calls, you know, before lunch from customers. What if you just wrote down what the key issues are of the, that the customers are bringing you, keep a log of it, and then it create a little spreadsheet for yourself at night while you're watching Netflix with your wife and just put, you know, hey, here's the, here's the top issues I'm seeing. Here's the percentage of breakdown. And then here's some solution ideas that, you know, and by the way, you didn't even have to think of the ideas because the customers, seven of them told you what they, would, what they want, right? So in your domain, within the company, within your job, you know, um, within you know your customer base if you are a, a business owner if you're in business development or if you're in sales 
how can you take the data from your job and spit that back to your customer, your boss, your peers, whatever it may be, your prospects as a source of, of value? I'll give you one more and then I'll turn it back to beast mode uh, for some more comments too. In my current role right now, so we have hundreds of, of historical opportunities in my current company where I work right now uh, as a, in, in the sales leadership role. And what I did is I had two new employees start brand new in like day, you know, probably day 15 or something when they were, they were brand new. I had them go read the stories and the notes from hundreds of our sales opportunities. And I, and I created a spreadsheet for them where they could basically populate what customers were saying their needs were. Basically for our category of software, I wanted to know what is it that, why is it, that, you know, what are the industry issues that are the most common that are making them come our way? And so we basically categorized that. We then were able to turn all that data and it was hundreds of data points into like some charts of, hey, here's the top uh, insights that we're seeing in our industry that are driving need and driving pain, which is why they were talking to us. So you've got data in your CRM, in your email, in your spreadsheet, from your conversations, beast mode. I mean, you have conversations in terms of growing people's businesses. Um, you know, you, 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 you know, when you talk to one customer, you get an idea that you can then share with another customer. So you're running into a lot of nice different examples uh, to help people put those puzzle pieces together. Yeah, for sure. One of the biggest things that I, I do and I try to teach my team to do. So whenever you have a customer on the phone or you have a client on the phone, is just trying to give them something that that way they feel like that phone call was successful. So, and, and a lot of times it's, it's early on and that's a lot of the ways that we earn our business is we're just providing feedback. We're just providing insight. Sometimes I'll see uh, somebody posting something on LinkedIn or social media and I'll just reach out and just give some free insight. Hey, this is something that I would do. I, I would like you to try it you know, provide me feedback. Tell me if it works. You let me know, but this is what I would do. This is the words that I would change and see, see if it works out for you. If it does, you know, just let me know. And I'm not asking for anything. I'm not seeking anything from them. I'm just providing my service. This is what I would normally do to pay a customer, but I'm just going to give it to you, you know? It's awesome. Yeah. And you mentioned to me kind of in our prep earlier that a lot of your customers do come in that way. Yeah majority of them, I would say almost 90% of them come in just because we've taken the time over months sometimes just to provide free insight. And again, there is a limit ultimately, but most of the time there's not, you don't get there because the customer sees the results of it and just has to jump on board. Well, I sure did enjoy chatting with you and I hope uh, people can really leverage, you know, the insights.